offensive regression uh, hit the Twins last year. And again, here we go again with this 2020 COVID season. I don't, and I'll go into a little bit more maybe uh, when I talk about Seattle later on in this this preview session. And that the, the drop off had to be expected. I mean, after all, this is the Twins team that set records for home runs, had the second highest slugging percentage of all time in 2019. A live baseball too, as well. Again, we, that's another show all in itself. There was really only one way to to go for this team, and that was a little bit south. Uh, they they were they went from being a second in bad average, eighteenth last year in that sprint that we had, from sixth in on base percentage to twentieth. Slugging percentage was affected. On base average, the the weighted OBA uh, to fifteenth. It really there was a lot of a lot of things that that came into play. Again, I expected it, and everyone that uh, I think most of us here on this panel probably expected. And that after that great 2019 season, there's a lot of question marks around this organization. A lot of people, if you read like I read about baseball, um, from the GM to the pitching coaches, all everything involved, uh, there's a this team has taken on an analytical uh, approach, much like the A's and Billy Bean. And some people believe they've gone overboard. Um, there's still a lot of people that scoff those analytics, believe it or not, that they don't like the fact that there's um, you know, educated people in positions where they think there should be baseball people. But there's a lot to like uh, about this Twins team, truthfully. Uh, but before I go into the, the line real quick, there's always going to be this. There's always going to be these questions. There's going to be the second guessing about who's in the front office. Um, is is Baldelli? Was Baldelli? Is Johnson? All these questions, Josh Kalk. Uh, again, Wes Johnson's being the pitch coach. So many questions. But until this team wins the playoff series, which they haven't won, they haven't won one. Since 2002, the questions will continue. They need to win. They need a series. And then a lot of the stuff will go away. They'll quit being second guess. But when you have Kepler, Donaldson, some of these guys are, are past their prime, but still productive. I mean, Donaldson, Cruz. Then there's Polanco, Sanyo, uh, Sanyo uh, Garver, uh, Buxton. If Buxton can stay healthy, this team's going to be a lot better. I, I, he's not at the top of the line. We're projected to be at the top of the line, guys. Um, but we both know, we all know, that if he stays healthy and he shows the kind of production he did in 19 and before, he could be back there. And then there's uh, a good shortstop in Simmons, in my opinion. Um, rotation, I still have question marks about this, if this rotation uh, can last for a full – can they all pitch 30 games? Can they get 30 starts? Maeda, Berrios, definitely questions, although I like him about Shoemaker. Uh, Pineda's good. And then there's uh, the veteran in Hap, left-hander Jay Hap. Uh, they go bullpen. By at least they go closer by committee, uh, being Taylor Rogers and and Comey, um, one being left-handed, one being right-handed, which is which is uh, uh, has its has its advantages. I'm going to tell you that I still like the Chicago team, and I like them to a degree of over 91 wins. And if you like them over the 91, like I do, I would I would lean to this Twins game under uh, under their win total, and you can get a different numbers depending on your shop. But as much as I like them, as much as I think they're still they're still a good club, and they're going to be competitive every single day, uh, as long as they're out there uh, swinging away and pitching well. Um, I like the under the season too much, and I, I like. And again, obviously, I don't like them to make the postseason a second straight year.